you for the debate. I recognize the member from Scarborough Southwest. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I'll keep a close eye on the clock. At 20 minutes, we're dealing with a very complex piece of legislation, and uh, I'll try to work my way through it. And uh, if I, I'll keep an eye on the clock so I don't go over. But I, I rise today, Madam Speaker, minutes, um, to, to debate a bill that, if passed, would support workers and businesses in the Ontario's construction sector. Um, uh, Madam Speaker, the Attorney General told this House last week when, when he spoke that the construction industry plays a key role in helping Ontario's economy thrive. There are more than 400,000 workers in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the construction industry, and Madam Speaker, that accounts for almost 7 per cent of Ontario's GDP. That's quite significant. Um, the construction industry, in many ways, provides a solid, a solid foundation for our economy. It builds Ontario up. And it's what keeps our economy thriving day after day, month after month, year after year. And that's why uh, this bill, Madam Speaker, is so vitally important. If passed, our, our proposed changes will be the biggest changes in Ontario's construction industry in over 30 years. So uh, these changes are uh, quite important. And as I said, over 30 years in the making, uh, our proposed uh, our proposal would update our construction laws to align with the best practices offered in many other international jurisdictions. Um, and, Madam Speaker, that will create a better, fair climate for businesses here at home. And it could help ensure that each and every worker on a project is paid on time, which means that they, in turn, can support their families. Um, Madam Speaker, I want to talk about construction sector for a minute. To recap what Minister Nagvi said to the House, um, actually it was two weeks ago, Ontario's construction sector operates like a pyramid. Uh, the owner or developer enters into agreement with one or more general contractor. Uh, these contractors enter into agreement with subcontractors to work on different parts of the project. And so the downward flow continues as these subcontractors hire workers and suppliers to help them meet their, uh, their own obligations. So if you mapped it all on a piece of paper, it would look something like a pyramid with the um, owner or developer on the top, and contractors and subcontractors, and their subcontractors branching outward and downward, um, and payment process would flow down the same route. So that's why I kind of call it a pyramid. The owner or developer gets paid, and the money then flows downward, changing hands until everyone on the project has been paid. So when a company doesn't get paid for their work, uh, the downward flow stops short. Contractors don't get paid, and they can't pay people they've hired either. So this lack of payment affects cash flow, which affects payroll and delays payments needed for trade workers, suppliers, and everyone else who has worked on the project. And that can be devastating to workers and their families. Working, working in construction can be tough. It's mentally and physically exhausting, this field of work. So what happens to the long day after a long week when there's no paycheck? Uh, you can imagine it's not a good situation, and workers get frustrated. It's just not right. Our government wants to do something about it to make sure everyone gets paid down the pyramid, pyramid um, uh, model. And so we're doing something about it, Madam Speaker. Um, our government introduced a way to make sure our construction laws are up to date and reflect today's realities. We have a way to stand up for the needs of Ontario's workers and businesses. If passed, the proposed Construction Lean Amendment Act would modernize construction laws to make payments and adjudication processes fairer and simpler and work better for businesses, their employees, and their families who are depending on them. And that's why this bill is so important. Uh, Madam Speaker, the Construction Le uh, Lean Act was created in 1983. That's almost 30, well, well over 30 years ago. And 30 years ago, the, the, the world was much different, Madam Speaker. Um, uh, business was conducted with a handshake. Um, your word was your bond, and a lot has changed since then. In 1983, contractors figuring out the cost of a project would bring out their desk calculators and slide rulers uh, so they could give their customers an estimate of what the price of the project would be. Plans were drawn up on blueprints. These, of course, were huge rolls of paper covered in meticulous drawings and figures. And project schedules were developed manually, with dates marked in pencil on a calendar and then rubbed out as things changed. There was no construction estimating software. There were no digital building plans. In fact, computers were just basically starting out at that time period. 
In the past 30 years, the world has changed. We have changed too. The construction laws that worked for the industry back then aren't what we need today. Construction projects and payment processes have become more and more complex, and late payments are a problem in every sector of the industry. The increased complexity of construction projects also means that resolving disputes takes more time than ever, and it can sometimes take years before people see the money owed to them. That means that a lot of families have to put their plans on hold, and in some cases indefinitely, and now to speak frankly, this is no way to conduct business. Over the past decade, Madam Speaker, we've received several proposals from stakeholders about how to change the Construction Lien Act. While everyone agreed that there were things that needed to be, be, be uh, changed in the Act, it had always been difficult to reach consensus on exactly what changes needed to be made, which in large part can be attributed to the diversity of the industry. That's why in 2014 we announced that we would launch an independent review on the Construction Lien Act, including how we could address payment issues in the construction industry. In February of 2015, we retained Bruce Reynolds and Sharon Vogel, both of whom are experts, leading experts in construction law at the law firm of Borden, Ladner, Gervais, to head up this review. We made it clear to them that they need to get this seemingly impossible job done, and I'm pleased to say they did it. After much research and consultation, Bruce and Sharon helped to reach a broad consensus on three core issues uh, regarding this bill, Madam Speaker. Number one, maintaining and modernizing the lien and holdback pr process. Number two, establishing a new system for prompt payment. And number three, creating a targeted adjudication system to resolve these disputes. They landed on a plan for a way forward and worked closely with a, an advisory group of dozens of stakeholders to develop a report uh, that had a concrete workable solution to reform Ontario's construction legislation. One year ago, we released their report titled Striking the Balance, Expert Review of Ontario's Construction Lean Act. Madam Speaker, balance is absolutely the right word for this report because its recommendations carefully weighed the many, many competing interests across the construction industry. And our bill includes some key amendments that will modernize construction lean and hold back rules. Our stakeholders recognize the difficulties with the hold back process, as they agree that maintaining a fund for liens that can be claimed is important. But that same hold back process can also reduce the speed in which the payment flows down the construction pyramid. So, Madam Speaker, we want to ensure hold back fees are paid out as soon as the deadline to file construction liens against the project has passed or the lien claims have been resolved. Contracts and subcontractors should be able to count on getting paid when they, when they should get paid and know they can meet their downward payment obligations in a timely manner so they can pay the people, people that they employ below them in the, in, the, in the pyramid scheme. This new bill would also require surety bonds to be posted on public projects above a certain dollar amount. These bonds are currently used on both public and private projects there is no legislation that mandates contractors to post them. So mandatory surety bonds will protect subcontractors and suppliers and make sure they get paid in case the project becomes insolvent. We also heard that contractors and subcontractors want more time to resolve disputes out of court and avoid additional legal fees by going to court. So we're proposing that we expand the timeline for filing liens and, and uh, starting court actions from 90 to 150 days instead. We're also proposing that specific bookkeeping requirements are set out to better protect um, subcontractors if a contractor becomes insolvent. In this way, we're trying to ensure that payment process down the pyramid continues uninterrupted. The proposed changes would also ensure that the legislation reflects the structure of large public-private projects. Madam Speaker, we know that people want to spend as little time and money possible resolving their construction lien claims. That's why we're proposing that the construction lien claims under $25,000 be resolved in, a, in small claim courts uh, instead of going to larger, higher courts. We think this will speed up the dispute resolution process and make it as cost-effective as possible. And finally, we're proposing that we change the name of the Construction Lien Act to be called instead the Construction Act 
to reflect the broader range of issues it covers. It's going to take a break here for a minute. Keep my eye on the clock there. Uh, Madam Speaker, late payment is one of the most pressing issues facing the construction sector today. When a company does not get paid for work, it sets off a chain reaction that affects its own payroll and the payment it needs to make to others. This will be devastating for workers, for businesses and for the entire project. Under the proposed legislation, the deadline for making a payment will be triggered by the first submission of a proper invoice which would clearly state information like the amount owing and the payment terms and invoices would be submitted monthly unless the parties set out different arrangement for their contracts. So we're creating more rules to make sure that the money flows down and that uh, payment is made properly. Madam Speaker, these changes would mean that both parties must negotiate and set out details before actual work has ever begun. But if you can, I can't agree on payment timelines, both parties will have to follow the timeline for payments set out in the legislation. The legislation will act as a, a, a guiding way to make sure that the uh, payments uh, flow through property. For instance, Madam Speaker, once an invoice has been submitted to the contractor, the owner will be required to pay the contractor within 28 days. So we have, so we have a solid number, like 28 days four weeks to pay that amount. That contractor must then pay his subcontractors within seven days of receiving the payment. And these contractors or subcontractors need to pay their subcontractors within seven days as well. So we're setting up definite uh, dates on which to pay the subcontractors that go below other contractors. This will help ensure that funds are not held back at the top and everyone is paid in a timely manner. Knowing exactly when to expect payment allows contractors and suppliers to run their businesses more effectively, make more competitive bids, and meet their financial responsibilities in a timely fashion. Madam Speaker, in the event that an owner or contractor fails to make a payment, mandatory interest will be added to the amount owed. Owners will be able to dispute an invoice by notifying the contractor within 14 days of any amounts that will be withheld from payment. If the parties do not reach an agreement at that point, the contractor could refer the case to a new construction dispute interim adjudication system. So this is new, you know, uh, and, and we're creating this a, a new construction dispute interim adjudication system, and I think it's, it's quite important to our new legislation. So this brings me back to the, to the next major part of the bill, Madam Speaker. Adjudication is a critical part of the prompt payment system. It is the key to speeding up the dispute resolution process as well as enforcing the process. It also gives owners the ability to dispute invoices when they feel there is a problem with the work done on a project or the amount owed to them. Those in the construction industry who have experience with litigation, particularly on large or complex projects, will understand, will understand the time and investment that are all too often involved in resolving a dispute in court. In some cases, the process to get to trial can take up to a year. The new system we are proposing, Madam Speaker, if passed, will mark a dramatic change to the industry. While, in, while today it can take up to a year to get to trial, under the proposed legislation, a qualified expert will look at the issue and provide an interim decision in just six weeks. Six weeks, Madam, Madam Speaker, is a lot better than a full year. And I think, again, another major change by introducing this new six-week um, timeline into the uh, legislation. Once an adjudication is finished, the parties can then decide if they still want to take the issue to court or if they want to treat the decision, the six-week decision, as, as a final decision. This adjudication system means that the parties do not have to wait for the issue to move to the court system, um, which is what presently exists right now. Um, the six-week decision uh, can be binding, and they, if they want to stick to that decision, they can. It's up to them. And they can continue to work on the project without delay. If the result of the adjudication is that the owner must pay, and the owner then refuses, the case may still go to court. But in the meantime, the contractor would have the right to suspend work. 
Madam Speaker, as you can see, we've tried to make sure everyone's interests are covered with proposed amendments and maintain a sense of fairness and balance. Madam Speaker, it's taken 34 years to get to the stage, 30, so 34 years to finally get something, legislation that you know, works to, to make various parties happy uh, and agree on a, a new system of, of operating construction in Ontario. And it's important that we get every aspect of this proposed legislation right. Should this bill move forward to the committee stage, which I hope it will, uh, we look forward to further input and ideas from stakeholders to make the new, this new legislation even better. So we're not saying, we're not ramming this bill down the legislature, we're saying let's go to committee and hear from other stakeholders or the same stakeholders to make the new legislation better or make amendments to the legislation. And if this bill passes, we look forward to seeing the difference it will make to the hundreds of thousands of people and families in Ontario supported by this critical sector. Madam Speaker, I want just to say, in kind of in closing here, that we need to update our laws to support the thousands of workers and their families who rely on the construction industry as a key source of their income. The change in the proposal to this bill, which has been two years in the making, will have an impact on nearly everyone involved in a construction project, from the companies who are involved on large, multi-million dollar construction projects to the families doing small-scale renovations of their homes. When I think of my riding of Scarborough Southwest, Madam Speaker, in my area there's both large, multi-million dollar construction projects and also smaller projects such as renovations being done on homes. So both, anything between in this area will be covered by this legislation. And I can tell you there's a lot of very large condominiums being built across the city, but a lot being built in Scarborough Southwest. And uh, when I commute to back and forth from, from work especially, I can see the construction going on. And uh, uh, whether it be condominiums or people who want to invest more in their property, and I'd make changes or renovations to their home and decide to hire contractors to do the work. So this represents the biggest proposed change to Ontario's construction industry in over 30 years. And it marks the first ever time industry stakeholders have reached a consensus on key issues such as modernizing lien and holdback rules, prompt payment and adjudication. This alone is a significant milestone. And of course, our work is not yet done. We will need the continued support and advice of our stakeholders at the committee stage when making refinements based on their input. And it's important because as we work through this process with this very complex leg legislation, um, dealing with so many parties at one time, we want to make sure that we hear uh, from, from the stakeholders uh, at the committee stage, as we usually do, having them make presentations or submissions. Some of them can be written instead of uh, oral. And uh, we listen, and then after the, we've heard from everybody, uh, we then decide to go clause by clause by the legislation, and if necessary, make changes to the legislation, which I think is very important. And our government is aware of that. You know, we're not saying this legislation is, you know, carved in stone, and that we're going to just uh, go forward and, uh, and 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 put this forward through. I think it's very important that we hear from. Uh, from the stakeholders and make changes uh, if necessary. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I look forward to our continued work to ensure that our construction sector thrives and drives our economy forward. So I'm glad to hear the members speak today. I think all three parties are basically on the same page. We, all, we agree that we have to make changes to the construction industry and the Construction Lean Act. And uh, I think it's very significant that the new bill will be called the Construction Act. So people understand, here are the rules in Ontario for construction. And uh, again, again that's, that's a very important uh, thing uh, for this bill. And uh, you know, hopefully, I've been listening uh, throughout, throughout this debate on this bill, uh, various people get up and speak. And uh, I'm happy to hear that they're in agreement with this bill, for the most part. And again, there could be changes. I keep repeating this, but it's important you know, that we, we're open to changes. Uh, from stakeholders and, and those that present, um, and the parties will have an input at that point. The committee stage, you bring this back up for um, third reading.
Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I actually fit it in with a few seconds left. Thank you. Thank